Pakados Bokador, Masechet Nazir, Daf Lamed He, Amudale 35A1. We're talking about in the Gemara, where the Gemara just says, now, according to Shitat, Rabbi Lazar ben Azariah, or Rabbi Lazar ben Azariah, the Kaimukim Lehai, Mechar Tzanim Ve'adzag. That means he comes and he's going to say that, what do you use the words, Char Tzanim Ve'adzag? Lomar, to tell you, Sheinu Chayav, that you have two Char Tzanim Ve'adzag, that you're not going to be Chayav until you're going to eat minimum of two Char Tzanim Ve'adzag. So, Prata Mena Lehad, you have the Prat, which means like this. Whenever you have Prat Uchlal Ufrat, you always need, which is a, a, a specification, generalization, specification. Remember that it has to be empty. Empty means that it's um, superfluous. It's 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 you're not using it for any other thing. According to Rabbi Lazar and Azariah, he comes and he says that a, a person will only going to become chayav if he ate chartzanim. Chartzanim is in plural. Chartzanim. It doesn't say chartzan. Chartzanim. So you must eat two chartzanim. Right, that's what it says. Alechilat chartzanim, two chartzanim, the zag, right, and also a zag, meaning zag. The chartzanim were the pits, and the zag was the outside. Okay, there was a machloket actually, but that's how we're going. The chartzanim are the pits of the grapes, and the zag is like the peel of the grapes. So therefore, according to him, you have to eat two pits, which usually grapes do have two pits, right, and one zag. So therefore, according to him, if you're going to be only chayav once you eat these two things, so how do you know the prat then? Remember, you need prat, uchlal, ufrat. Now, the second prat, if you're going to say now, mechatzarim v'adzag, which that was a second prat, that was a second specification. But if you're going to tell me now that that was taught in order to teach you that you're going to be chayav when you're going to eat two chatzarim v'adzag, so what are you going to do? So says the Gemara. Yeah, okay, there's more, but I'm saying but minimum of two pits, and the, and the, what's it called? And the, um, and the outside, the zad. Okay, the peel. So, answers the Gemara, Savala, Kerebi Lazar, Yolza Kerebi Lazar, Tedari Shmiet Veriba. He doesn't say it's Klal Ufrat Uchlan. He says it's a Ribui Vimiut. Miut Veribui, right? What it means is like this. If you remember, they're very, very similar, right? What is Ribui Vimiut? Miut Veribui means there's an exclusion or a, they call it a limitation and amplification. Okay, that you're including things. So therefore, here, what they're trying to say is, is that when you're going to have something which is going to be a limitation and amplification, you don't have the third one. So according to, right, according to what? According to the shita, he's not learning it's a prat uchlal ufrat. Because if he's going to be learning it's a prat uchlal ufrat, it's going to be problematic. You don't have the third prat. You understand? So therefore, obviously, here we're talking about miut very boy. If you want, you can answer another answer. Rabbi Lazar ben Azariah, he holds like Rabbanan. Now remember, Rabbanan, they argue, and they say that Chalzanim v'adzag is the Prat Ashni, which means even though they're going to come and teach us this din in the Mishnah, the Isa, Kadam Ziv, you're going to tell me now that Chalzanim v'adzag is like Rabbi Lazar ben Azariah. Lichtevre rachamana lehaim e Chalzanim v'adzag gabe prate. It should have come and told you me Chalzanim v'adzag also even before the klal. Meaning, one more time, how did it have it? It had a prat, klal, uprat. Okay, everyone had it? You remember? One more time. Let's go. It's written like this. It says, klal, uprat, yain v'shechar yazir. That is a prat. Mikol asher mi gefen yain. Anything that comes out of gefen yain is the klal, the general rule. Mechar tzanim v'adzag is a prat again. So comes now and they say, if you're going to tell me that Rabbi Lanzar Rabbi Nazariah, Mechal Tzanim V'adzag should have been written before Mikol Asher Yasi Migefen Yain. You should have written Miyayin V'shechal Yazid, Mechal Tzanim V'adzag, Mikol Asher Yasi Migefen Yain. The fact that it's written afterwards teaches you that it's going to be Perat Uchlal Ufrat. So Lemai Hilchata Katve Bata Klal. Why did you write it after the Klal? Shema Mina Lamedad Mechal Ufrat. In order to teach you that it's Klal Ufrat Uchlal. Right? Prat Uchlal Ufrat. Why don't I just say that the entire Lashon is coming to teach you that it's going to be Prat Uchlal Ufrat? How does Abila Zabin Azariah know then that you're not allowed to eat the Chatzanim Vezagim? If you're going to use it as a Prat Uchlal Ufrat, how do you know that you're not allowed to eat whether it's the pits or the, or the seeds, right, of the, of the grapes? So answers the Gemara, it should have been written Shne Chatzanim or Shne Zagim. Or Chartzan Vizag. 
Lemai Hilchatayim. So why does the Torah say Mechatzanim Vezag? Shema Mina comes to teach you that means one of them was the Lashon Rabim in plural, and one of them was in singular. So he says Shema Mina comes to teach you the Midrash be Klal Ufrat to teach you a Klal Ufrat. He can and therefore you could also do a Jehuchal Shnei Chatzim Vezag. Meaning you could do two different teachings from the same word. The fact that the Torah could have written both of them in singular, both of them plural, and at the end it only wrote one of them singular, one of them plural, so that teaches you two different halachot. Halacha, that it's two chartzanim and one zag, that was one, one teaching, that was a real and the second teaching, that you could do prat uchlal ufrat. Okay? Okay, let's continue. Says the Gemara, very bilazar, and according to the bilazar, that he's going to make a dirashav miyut very ba. How does he know this terasha of the Pratu Khlalu Frat? Amar Biyavu says Biyavu, Nafkale Meaikra, he learns it from another Pasuk. The Pasuk says, Kiten Ish Reu Hamor Oshodose. Right, this was in two weeks ago. Prashat Mishpatim. A person is going to give to his friend, whether it's going to be a Hamor, a Shor, or a Se. He gives him a donkey, right, an ox, or a sheep. That is a Prat because it's specified. What is he giving to his friend? Okay. Then it says, Bechol behema, And any animal. Any animal is a klal. It's a general rule. It's not a specific. I'm talking about now. Before I was talking about a Jaguar, a Rolls Royce, and a Bentley. And then I said any car. So a car is a, speci- is a generalization. It's not a specific. Beforehand, everything was the, right? Was the, the specifics. Yeah, I was naming your cars. Yeah. So what happens? So he comes and he says, that's going to be the kelal, lishmor, to watch over it. When it says lishmor, to watch over it, chazaru prat, again, it's a specific, because obviously we're talking about animals that you need to watch over them. So pratu chlalu frat, here you have a specification, right? A generalization and specification. You're only going to judge like the specification, which means that we're not going to do it like everything. We're going to go for the specification. That it has to be, right, that something that you're able to watch over. So this is going to come to exclude whether it's going to be bears or lions or things like that, that you can't watch over them. So if there's no deen of Shomer Sachat, imagine I right now come and I bring you a lion. And I said, you know what, doctor, do me a favor. Watch over my lion. You're not obligated to. And the reason why is because you have to be able to watch over it. And that's what they learned from that pasuk. You cannot watch over a lion. The lion might watch over you. Right, but you can't watch over the lion, right? If you're lucky, he watches over you. If not, mm-hmm. for supper. Yeah? I'm working in the simple field. Ah, yeah, for sure. 100%. Yeah? Fine. So says the Gimara. Rava, ma, Rava comes and he says, Nafkale mehaikra. No, he learns it from another pasuk. You know which other pasuk? It says, We're talking about, right? Here, it says over here, we're talking about another Pratu Khalufrat. It says that when you're going to come and you're going to bring from the sheep a korban, whether it's from the sheep, from the goats, for an ola, a korban ola, zakhar tamim you have to bring it from a uh, zakhar. The im mean, when it says any from, that's going to be a prat. Because again, it's only part of the sheep are going to be fitting for a korban ola. Okay, only part of the sheep. When it says a tzon, it's a klal, it's a general rule. Because the, the 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 sheep is in plural is like a, a generalization. Kivasim veizim when it says now the sheep and the and the goats chazar uparat again it gives you a prat prat uchlal uprat ela ena tadan ela kena prat right which means that only part of the sheep are going to be permitted right from the um, ah so here it says for example he says over here that it's going to be kosher. Okay, they learn a whole bunch of things here, but what exactly, uh, if it was Rovea Venirba, it's going to be, whether it's going to be that they were, uh, uh, they had relations or for whichever reason. So also it's going to become prohibited. Okay, fine. Amale of Yehuda Midrkasarta says in Yehuda Midrkasarta to Rava, Veleilaf, why don't you learn in Hadakra from the Pasuk? The Pasuk says when we're learning from Pratu Chlalufrat, which is Adam Kiakli Miken Korban, again, we brought this down, Min is a Prat. Right? What is a prat? Specifics. Habema is a klal. It's a generalization. Bakar vatzon, again, chazaru prat. Prat uchlalu frat, et adan el kena perat. So therefore, the question that we're asking is, is again, the same halacha. Why can't we learn from there the exact same halacha? 
So Amalei comes and he says, Min hai lekel mishma mina, you cannot learn from mina beema over there. The mehatam, as if it was going to be over there, hava mina, I would have thought to say, right, ha behema. What does it mean when it says right now, ha behema? Right, lamidhe amu bet, 35b. Where we're talking about a chaya is also a behema. And when we're talking about a wild animal, a wild animal is also part of, part of an animal, right? So he comes and he says, so it's kilu, it's written, right? Mina behema, mina chaya. So when it says mean, you cannot come and exclude whether it's going to be chayot or any other things. So therefore, he says that, uh, you know, at the end of the day, not every wild animal is allowed to be brought as a korban. Can you bring a lion as a korban? No, right? That's what he says. So therefore, you cannot bring down this pratu chalalufrat in such a scenario. So Amalei, so says of Yehuda, mi diskarta tu rava, chaya bichlal behema. Right? Are you going to come and you're going to tell me that really behemet, a chaya is a behema? A wild animal is not a domesticated animal. It's not part of a behema. Hakdiv is written bakar vatzon. Right? When it's written here, bakar vatzon, these are sheep and cattle. Sheep and cattle are not any wild animals. Vahav le pratu chlal ufrat. Ve'enat adan. Right? Ela kena perat which means that you could only judge according to the specifications. And not the, it's only going to be an animal, domesticated animal, and not a wild animal. So says the Gemara, how do you know the Behemet? That is the, the real concept, right? So he says the Tanya was learned in a Abrita, which means how do you know that whenever you have a Prat Uchlal Ufrat, how do you know that you always judge like the Prat? How do you know that we always go like the specification and not like the generalization? So he says the time we learned in the Brayta. This is to do with Maaser Sheni. To do with Maaser Sheni, it says, "Venatata hakesef bechol hashet avena shecha." That's a cloud. You're going to give the money, right? With everything that you want, that's going to be a generalization, which means you could buy with the money, right? Anything that you want. This is the money that you were redeemed on Maaser Sheni. Remember, Maaser Sheni is years one, 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 two, three. One, one, two, two, four, two, four, four, four. one, two, four, five. five. Is that one, two, four, five is Maaser Shani. What is Maaser Shani? The second 10%. After you give the first 10% to the Levi, right? And also after, and remember that already the Levi gave his 10% to the Kohen. And it's also after you took off for the Kohen, the Tumad Dula. Now you have something which is called Maaser Shani. What is Maaser Shani? You either take the produce and you have to eat it in Jerusalem, in Yerushalayim, inside the walls of Yerushalayim, or you redeem it for money. But when you redeem it for money, you have to add one, Fifth, and after adding one fifth for money, now you go to the Bet Hamikdash, you go to the Jerusalem, and then you could buy. You could have steaks, right? You could buy whatever you want, and then you're going to come and you're going to enjoy, right, from the food. So when it says over here, you could buy anything that you want. Then it says, whether it's going to be the sheep and the cattle, right, and the wine and the beer, prat. That's a specification. What are you buying? And anything which your heart desires, which your body desires. So here, it's actually going to be One more time. Before, we were always talking about perat uchlal ufrat. Specification, generalization, specification. Now we're flipping. Now it's kelal ufrat uchlal. Generalization, specific, generalization. Okay? Now when you have kelal ufrat uchlal, we're going to judge like the Pirat. Maha Pirat, just like the Pirat. Hamefurash, which is written in the Torah. It's primi, primi, gidule karka. It has to be a fruit, and from a fruit, and it's also gidule karka. It grows from the ground. So too, it has to be anything on top of a food, which is a primi, primi, gidule karka. Which means you could buy from the money of Maaser. You could come and you're allowed to buy even Ofot, right? Because they actually grow, or they also eat from the, from the ground. But you cannot buy fish. You cannot buy water or salt. Okay? Why? Because all these things do not grow from the ground. So you can't buy fish with money of Maaser Shani. You could buy chicken. You could buy chickens, birds. They, you they, could buy... They give food to the salmon with the... Uh, when we have a klalu fratuchal, ken prata dainan. Right? So therefore we come and we are doing like the prat. Right? So klala batra mayahani. So why do I need the next klal? Meaning, when we had... Prat uchlalu prat, right? The specification, generalization, specification, they go like the perat. But when you have klalu frat uchlal, you're also going like the perat, which is in the middle. So why do I need the second klal then? Why do I need the klal? The klal is a generalization. I'm coming, I'm opening up the doors, right? I'm making it broader. I'm amplifying it. 
why in the world then do I need a second klal? If anyway you're you're going like the prat. The, the no, but there the no, because there I could say that I needed the I needed the second prat to teach you that don't do because if you only had prat to klal, so then you're going to be mirabe, you're going to uh, you're going to amplify. So if you needed the next prat, prat to come to come, no, 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 I'm closing it down. Okay. I'm narrowing it down. However, though, what's going on here? So he says. Ahani le sufi called the damile. He says the klal acharon is coming to be uh, is coming to include anything which is dome to it. Which means because if not, then you would have only had a klal ufrat, and then we would have said it's only the prat which is written in the Torah. Because when we say klal ufrat, em bichlal al mashibifrat. So therefore, I needed the other klal at the end to add in other things which are similar to the prat. Because if not, I only have the prat. Meaning, like we just mentioned before, birds, right? Chicken. Chicken is dome to the tzom v'bakar. But it's not tzom v'bakar. It's not meat, right? It's only the rabbanan. If a person eats uh, chicken and and, and and milk, right? It's only the rabbanan. It's not the right, but it's not tzom v'bakar. However, though, says the chachamim, but that's compared to the tzom v'bakar. I needed the last klal in order to add in the chicken because that way it's compared mm-hmm. to all the prats. If I didn't have the other klal, then it's only klal ufrat. When it's only going to be klal ufrat, and, and bakal ma should be frat, which means I only go by the prat. What was the prat? So that's it. I only have these specifications. I don't have anything else. Ah, the other thing is compared to it. No, I'm sorry. I only have a klal ufrat. I needed the klal to add on anything which is similar to the prats. That's why I needed the extra klal at the end. So says the Gemara too, and furthermore, one second. You just answer me now the klal ufratu klal. Let's go the other way around. The other way around was what we said at the beginning. What was at the beginning? We said pratu klal ufrat. So we said we're going like the prat. So prat batra Why do we need the second prat? So says the Gemara. I love prat batra. If it wasn't going to be the second prat, have I would have thought to say na se klal musaf al prat. I would say that the klal is going to be added on to the prat. Which means it's going to be marbe kol davar to the klal, right? Even though it's not dome bichlal to the prat. So therefore, the last prat is coming and saying, no, it has to be dome to the prat, not to the klal. If I didn't have the last prat, I would say it has to be compared to what? To the klal. Because he had first prat and then klal. So I'm going to say everything has to be compared to the klal, not to the prat. Mm-hmm. Everything has to be compared to the generalization, not the specification. But now that I came and I said the prat, no, now it has to be compared <laughs> to the prat, not to the klal. So in both um, cases, we're, we're judged by the prat. Whether you love prata batra if it wasn't going to be for the last prat, I mean, I would have thought to say that's a klal musa for the prat that you're going to be marbe anything which is matim to the klal, and therefore again I have to I have to have it that it's going to minimize. So says the Gemara, Michti tren klal uprata. So one second, in a case of two klals and a prat, yeah, utren prata uchala or the other way around, keem prata dalina. You're always, this is uh, David's question. At the end of the day, whether you had two clouds in a prat or two prats in a cloud, you're always going like the prat. So Maika Benu So then what is, the, what, is the, what is the difference then between the two midot then? Yeah? So the Gemara says, Ika di'ilu tarten klale ufrata, Ika prate de damele afilu bechad sad marbina. Right? When you're going to come and you're going to have two clouds in a prat, right? Two clouds in a prat is klal ufratu klal. Right? Remember, it's always a sandwich. So you have klal ufrat uklal, two klals and a prat. So if you have a prat, which is going to be in the sandwich, which is going to be dome, even in one side, marbinan, we're going to add it in because it's also inside of the klal. Trek prat uklala, when you're going to have two prats and a klal, so now it's prat uklal ufrat, yika prat adam mishnet sadi marbinan. It has to be 100% similar in order to add it in. If it's only going to be one sad, it's not going to uh, be added in. So here it says that even though both midot, you're 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 saying kena perat, but it's mistaber to be merbot yoter alide klal ufrat uchlal because you have two klals. So that's why it's much more it's much more logical to add when you have two generalizations, right? And it's much more logical not to add when you have two specifications. So that's why he's coming and he's saying whether well, it's going to be compared to it completely or not. If it's going to be prat uchlal uflat, so then it has to be mamash tut stadim, similar. It has to be mamash 100% similar to come and to add something. But when you come and you say it's going to be, uh, 
when you come and say klal ufrat uchlal, then even if it's going to be one sad that it's got like something common, you're already going to add it in because remember you're on the adding side, you're not on the subtracting side, you're amplifying. So michti, so let's let's try to understand prat uchlal nasa klal musaf ala prat. When you come and you say prat uchlal. Right, you have a specification and then you have a generalization. So the klal adds on the prat, correct? Vitrabe kolmile. So then you should actually be marbe everything. Umiet veriba nami. The same thing when you have a mute and a riba. When you have a limitation and an amplification, also the same thing. Riba kol it should add everything. Vitrabe kolmile. It's going to add everything. So then, what's the difference then between miet veriba and pratu klal? Right now we're going back. You remember at the beginning, beginning we went and we said there was a machloket. Do you learn a ribuyu mute or do you learn? It should be the exact same thing. If you only had pratuchlal, you first had a specification, then you had an amplification, right? The generalization. It's going to generalize for everything. <laughs> You're adding everything. So therefore, it's adding everything. When you have also pratuchlal, it's the exact same thing. You have a prat specification, then you have the klal. So therefore, the question is, it should also add everything. So says the Gemara, Ika, you know what the difference between them is? Ika, the ilu pratuchlal. When it's going to be a pratuchlal, marbina and afilu, you're going to add even alim velulavim. What does that mean? When you're going to come and you're going to have a pratuchlal, remember, specification, right? And generalization. You're going to add even alim velulavim. You remember alim velulavim was even the shoots or even the, the leaves and the, and, the, and the branches, the soft branches, you're going to add in that you're not allowed to eat. The nazir is not allowed to eat, not even the, the, the shoots or not even the branches or the leaves of the grape tree as well. Miet veriba, but when you're going to learn a miet veriba, it's only lulavinin. It's only going to be the lulavin, but not the alin. Okay, why? Because alin are much harder to eat than the lulavin. So because of that, when you do a pratu khlal, you're being marbe anything, which is like the klal. When you do miet veriba, you're going to... Um, you're going to uh, you're going to limit things which are much further away from the prat. You understand? Meaning a klal ufrat. Uh, sorry, it's really a prat uchlal. Right? The prat uchlal. You're going to add much more than a mute vidiba. A mute vidiba, even though you're amplifying, you don't amplify too far off. But a prat uchlal, you you go everything which is done. Okay, fine. Amar biavu. Says Rabbi Avu in the name of Yochanan, all the Yisurin of the Torah, all the Yisurin of the Torah, and Eter mitzaref li Yisur. The Eter is not going to be mitzaref to the Yisur, right? Which means the Shiur Kavua is a Shiur Kavua, and you're not going to be mitzaref, right? Eter to Yisur, okay? Chutz mi Yisur Nazir, except for Yisur Nazir, where the Eter is going to be mitzaref to the Yisur, which means if you're going to come and eat a half of a zayit of an avim. And a half of the kazait of bread. The bread is going to be mitzaref to the, the, the half of the kazait of the anavim. Remember, an azid could only not eat grapes. He's allowed to eat, uh, he's allowed to eat uh, bread. So here, he's taking the bread and he's adding it with the wine or the grapes. He's soaking it. You remember we spoke about the case of soaking it into the wine. And now he comes and eats it. Now it has a kazait. When it now has a kazait, it's mitzaref. He's surveter. Mitzaref, and all of a sudden now he's going to get lashes because he ate a kazait of wine. Ah, he didn't eat a kazait of wine. He only ate a kazait, a half a kazait of wine. Doesn't matter because it's going to be mitzaref with the heter. Share amra Torah, but the Torah says v'chol mishrat anavim. What is mishrat anavim? Anything which you're shoreh, anything which you come and you soak inside of it, right? Anything which is mishrat anavim lo yishtei. You're not allowed to drink. So for here, when you took this bread and you soaked it into the wine or into the grape juice, whatever it is. So now it's going to be mitzaref, and therefore you're going to be chayah. Sorry, okay. So he's 